the one with the GP in the health center. And yes. the district nurse is the one who's uh, doing home visits to the patients. Oh, okay, so they usually visit their home. As a matter of fact, community nurses or district nurses belong to community uh, centers, health centers, while the practice nurse is the one coming from the GP surgery. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrea Berkhout. I'm the founder of Andrea Berkhout Academy. And today we are discussing an OET writing task. Um, a kind of letter. You will see what type of letter it is. Uh, this is a little bit later. OET, which means occupational English test is designed for doctors, nurses, pharmacists, dentists, and other allied medical professionals uh, to help you achieve registration in um, English-speaking countries such as the UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, and recently the United States of America. The OET writing task consists in a medical letter that you as a medical professional need to send to a certain or a specific reader and uh, our letter today is, uh, let's say, uh, designed to, who do you believe? Are there nurses or, um, or not? Doctors. I usually have these letters for nurses, but today I think we will uh, discuss a, medic a medicine one. Is it okay with you? Yes or not? I'm not, I don't hear anything. Oh, okay. So we will take a medical one. I will share the screen with you. This is our original letter by Andrea Berhout Academy. So uh, as you know, we also prepare our own materials. And I uh, will tell you something. The secret is that it doesn't matter that it is a nursing or a medicine letter because once the reader is a specific person, what matters is what the reader needs to know. How many types of letters do we need? To, do we have in OET examination? Four. One type of letter? Are you sure? No, three. No, oh, four. There yeah, are four. there are mainly three types of letters. Yes, and the first one is the referral, referral uh, letter, right? Transfer and discharge. Exactly. The second one would be a discharge letter. And the third one would be a transfer letter. Okay. What kind of letter I prepared to you today, you are going to find very, very soon. What is the most important uh, thing to do when you receive the letter? I need to tell you that once you receive the letter in the examination room, you will have five minutes to scan the letter and to choose the relevant information out of uh, what you have on the paper without writing anything. Because I have this, I had this surprise uh, some time ago when one of our students told me, teacher, did you know that you are not allowed to write anything in those five minutes? Yes, we know. <laughs> so this is the one important thing that you need to remember. Once you get the letter, you will have five minutes to study it and to work only mentally without writing anything. So uh, the referral letter is usually sent to somebody who knows or doesn't know the patient. The referral one? Both of them. Hey, I would say that usually a referral is done to somebody who does not know or does not have any knowledge about the patient situation. And this is why the referral letter will generally include some background, medical background, social background, if necessary. Is the discharge letter sent to somebody who knows the patient or does not know the patient? No, no, no. The discharge letter is usually done to somebody who knows the patient. What about the transfer one? Doesn't know. Uh, we don't know if they know or not. Um, probably they uh, have no knowledge about the patient, as we, we know. What is the most important thing to do when you get the letter in front of you? Who you write the paper? Right, reading the... The writing okay. Task. okay, so the first thing that you need to do is to read the writing task. Okay, who would like to read this writing task that we have here on the screen? Pick me, teacher. Pick me. I want. I will. I will read. Okay. Now, now everybody the... wants. Let's choose one. Mihala, <laughs> please. Using the information given in the case notes, write a letter of referral to Dr. Albert Stone gastroenterologist at Alta View Hospital, asking him for upper and lower endoscopy and initiation of 
treatment for your patient. The patient. address, oh, okay. The mm -hmm. address you should write to is eight five Thornton State City Harney. City Harney, and we are accompanied by your dogs, right? By your pets. No, 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 I don't have it. No. Your neighbor's pet then. Oh, okay. So using the information given in the case note, write a letter of referral. Very well. Uh, to Dr. Please, me, I mute your microphone. Thank you. To Dr. Albert Swan, who is a gastroenterologist. And we have a specific uh, requirement for the doctor as well, asking him for upper and lower endoscopy. And the second task, the second uh, requirement is initiation of treatment for your patient. So these are the keywords that we need to identify and we need to know before going to the rest of the letter. So referral, gastroenterologist, upper and lower endoscopy and initiation of treatment for your patient. Okay, um, can this task be for nursing too? Or can it be only for medicine? It can be for nurses too. Yeah. It can be for nurses too, because you nurses are also required to write referral letters for specialist doctors. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Now that we are uh, the GP themselves or the practitioners is not really relevant. Please, whoever is uh, is uh, um, speaking, covering my speaking, please mute. Uh, Irina, please mute some, the one that uh, that has a background sound so that we can hear each other here. Okay, patient details. Who would like to read the patient details? Marius, can you try? Yes, of course. So patient please. details. Uh, name, Martin Washington. Date of birth, 13th of January, 1998. Uh, mm -hmm. Marial status, not married, living girlfriend. And residence, uh, 112 Woods Court, Leighton Town. Next of kin, Martha Thompson, mother. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, how much do I need to read? Well, presentation date as well. If you can also read the presentation presentation date, it would be great. Uh, presentation date, 3rd of uh, April, 2019. Uh, okay. Now let's talk about symptoms, right? <laughs> so, Gabi, can you read the symptoms? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, symptoms, abdominal pain, uh, diarrhea, Diarrhea, recent, yes. Diarrhea, recent uh, weight loss. Uh, diagnosis presumed uh, Crohn's disease plus uh, more or less uh, arthritis related plus to... Plus or minus, yes. Plus, plus or minus, minus arthritis. Arthritis related to IBD. Okay, what is IBD? It's inflammation... Uh, I think it, it, it in this uh, case is inflammatory yeah. bowel... Disease. Okay, disease. Oh, okay, the inflammatory bowel disease. So we have a diagnosis, a presumed, I mean, a provisional diagnosis, let's say, a presumed Crohn's disease and uh, possible arthritis related to IBD. Nicoletta, can you continue, sweetheart? Yes. Uh, hmm. Past medical oh. history. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have to say like that. Uh, hmm. Cervical spine fracture. And, cervical uh, spine fracture, correct. And uh, can you do the Phrenic. right? Can you yes, do the right will, more bigger? Uh, I don't know if I can uh, uh, do it bigger, but is phrenic nerve damage? Uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, wears glasses from uh, hypermetaphoria. Hyper Hypermetaphoria. Da, yes. Uh, last change of uh, last change of prescription 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, testicular torsis. Uh, torsion. Torsion. Testicular torsion repair. But uh, 15 years of age. Yeah. Uh, appendicectomy. But uh, appendicectomy. <laughs> <laughs> appendicectomy or appendectomy? Yes. But uh, seven years. For, of of age. age. Very well. Uh, let's continue with uh, Carmen. Carmen Sita, please, sweetheart. Yes. Social background, college student, uh, occasional consumption of alcohol, smokes mm -hmm. a quarter of a pack of cigarettes. Yes. And I should go further. 
please. Yeah. Uh, plays football regularly, less in the last couple of months, lives mm -hmm. with his girlfriend, and uh, they have a dog. Deny okay. any recent travel. Denies. Denies any, Denies recent, any travel. recent travel. Or unsanitary living or working conditions. Admits being under a lot of pressure with the work lot in college in the last year in the last year oh, okay philip please continue with the medication <clears throat> medications vitamin d supplements yeah family history hypertension and hypothyroidism. hyper hyperthyroidism yes medical background presents with abdominal pain diarrhea and recent weight loss for past three months mm -hmm. currently has 10 episodes of diarrhea per day with no blood, wakes up with abdominal pain and diarrhea. About diarrhea. Three, diarrhea. Diarrhea about three times. I think Philip blocked. About three times per night. Oh, Does okay. not report any emergency, okay. incomplete entry or incontinence. Okay. Wait. <laughs> Has experienced abdominal pain with. I think uh, his connection. I think his connection. Uh, okay, Philip, thank you. I think your connection is not that great, so I would continue with Christina. Christina from uh, wakes up with abdominal pain, if it is possible. Wake. Wakes up. Uh, wakes up with abdominal pain and diarrhea about three times per night. Does not report any urgency, incomplete imputing or incontinence. Weight has dropped visibly in the last months. Oh, okay, uh, Mihala, please don't uh, don't uh, ta <laughs> don't push the kit us here because why we hear it in the background. Thank you, Mihala. Continue, Christina. Now has experienced abdominal pain with occasional diarrhea since he was in, uh, in middle school. But in middle often, school? In middle school, <clears throat> but he often passed it off at, as the stomach flu. Okay, that's enough, Christina. Thank you. Lenuza, can you continue, sweetheart? You are muted. <laughs> uh, has had back... Stiffness, stiffness. Uh, stiffness stiffness in the morning and some uh, arthralgias 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 of the knee elbow and the past week uh, oh, okay that's enough in, uh, in the past two years thank you camelia could you continue Sorry, uh, in the past two years, uh, he seldom requires analgesia. Usually symptoms disappear with movement. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. assessment, oh. And yes, it's okay, continue. Assessment, uh, pale, looks tired, uh, abdomen soft, lacks uh, middle center tiredness, no mazes or um, organ... Organomegaly. Okay. okay, what is the organomegaly? is increased in the size of the organs. Okay, uh, Laura, are you, stay, are you there, sweetheart? I, I wanted to say Irina, but- Yes, I, I am. <laughs> okay, Laura, please continue. Um, perineal region normal, CVC neurology, respiratory normal examination, mm -hmm. uh, HR 98, BP 112 over 76, yeah. uh, respiratory rate 18, blood test, uh, hemoglobin 90 milligrams per de deciliter, mm -hmm. double CC 12 or, and 10, multiplied, multiplied 10 power 9, 10 power 9, um, I think it's neutrophils, neutrophils 48%, percent mm -hmm. um, PLT, it's platelets. 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 Yes. It's uh, 4,000. 430. 000. Sorry. 30,000. Yes. And CR, CRP. CRP, which is the. Um, 
reactive, reactive C protein, C pro protein, yes? Okay, and it's 23. 23 and ISR? ESR, what is the ESR? ESR. Mm -hmm. What is that? Is that the sedimentation rate or not? Oh, yeah. It's 54. Okay. okay. 54. Continue, please. And the uh, fecal protectin, yeah. uh, awaiting results, stool culture and uh, virology is negative. Um, ACT 23. AST, AST 23 units. Unit per, uh, I don't know what is I. Continue. ALT 30 units. Uh, urea 3 millimore per li I think it's per liter. Per liter, yes. Yeah, creatinine one, uh, 1.2 milligram per deciliter. Yeah. Uh, sodium, it's 134 millimore per liter. Potassium, 3.6. And um, chlor, but I think it's different in English. It's one zero from oh, Latin. 109 oh, and nine millimole per liter. A liter is Other from investigations Latin. awaiting um, private appointment for MRI small bowel. Okay, for the MRI of the small bowel. Uh, do you mind if you read the, the task again, Laura? Yes, yes. You mind? Just, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I won't. <laughs> okay, do you the mind? information given in the case notes, write a letter of referral to the Dr. Albert Swan, gastroenterologist at Alta View Hospital, asking him for upper and lower endoscopy and initiation of treatment for your patient. Mm -hmm. The address you should write is to is uh, 85 Thornton, South City, Hurry. Saint City, Hurry. Oh, okay. Now, we have a gastroenterologist, yes? And we have a provisional diagnosis. I mean, we have two provisional diagnoses. One is about it's Crohn's and the other one was, do you remember? Or I should go with the pages. Is arthritis related to the inflammatory bowel disease. Oh, okay. Now, let's go to the beginning because the, what we need to find out now is what the relevant information is, right? Because our, uh, our score will complete with the relevant information. Now, uh, you are going to tell me, I think, <laughs> what we need to take and what we should not. Uh, what about the name of the patient? Yes, of course. I'm a bit tricky. Of course, you need yes. to take it. Date okay, the date of birth, is that important? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. It's important because this is how we make the difference between different patients. Marital status? No. No, it is not important. Residence? Also not important. Not important. Next of kin? No. no, no, we don't take the next of kin because he is not uh, jeopardized uh, <laughs> deeply by the disease and he's grown uh, enough. He's, uh, he's an adult. Presentation date? Yes. yes. Yes, so we are going to take it. Now, symptoms? Yes. Yes. All of them? Yes. 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 Abdominal pain, diarrhea, and recent yeah. weight loss. Everything is important, right? The presumed yes. diagnosis? Yes. 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 We need to tell the gastroenterologist. Uh, let's see what is important from the past medical history. So we have a cervical spine fracture and phrenic da nerve damage in 2012. Yes. No. 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 So we have some yes and some no. Okay. What is, uh, why should we take it and why shouldn't we? Who can give me a piece of explanation here? I think my mind, spine. no. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm listening. Is the is not the relevant with the, the the diagnosis? Okay, I understood why it's not that you say you are saying it's not relevant. But why isn't it relevant? This is the question. Why should we ignore this piece of info? Because we. Are the cervical spine is uh, not important for the doctor because for, he for is. A, yeah? Yes. Okay. So, gastroenterologist would be probably interested in something that uh, still has influence 
on the life of the patient. So if this uh, has been, I don't know, or if this uh, had been there three days ago, maybe, I mean, for sure it would have been relevant because the patient is under the condition, still under the condition. But as it happened to, in 2010, uh, sorry, 12, out of question, we are not taking it. Uh, what about wearing glasses? Is not important. I don't think he cares, yes. Testicular torsion repair? Is not important. No. Okay, appendicectomy? I think no. this no. is important because it's uh, part of... Uh, See, you were right, I sneezed. So maybe I, because I, this is not highly relevant, maybe I will choose another color. I will choose some green. And if I have enough space, I can write it because this is pa part of the digestive system that is missing. <laughs> okay, so maybe he would like to know about this, but it is not highly important. So I will use another color to underline it. If you have space, you can write it down. Otherwise, it is okay if you don't. Now, let's go to the social background. So we have a, we have a college student here, right? Martin is a college student. Is it relevant for the gastroenterologist? No. No, probably not. That he occasionally consumes alcohol? Yes. yes. This is, is important. It's important. It's what important. does it mean? I mean, this. what does this occasionally mean? So sometimes. Sometimes. So as we don't have... As we don't have a regular consumption of alcohol, I would say that this can be missed as well. I mean, he's not a heavy drinker. If I had somebody who was a regular drinker or even a heavy drinker, I would have mentioned it. But if he drinks every three months, <laughs> I would say no, let him drink <laughs> in this case. He smokes a quarter of a pack of cigarettes. I, I don't know. It can be. Yeah. So should we take it? And if we if we take it, why? If we don't take it, I also want to know why. Uh, I don't take because it's uh, is not the digestive system part. But the lungs. does does uh, smoking influence any yes. of those yes. diagnoses that he might have? So I think, I think that I would like to take that he yeah. smokes, yeah? He smokes a quarter of a pack of cigarettes probably daily. So daily smoking affects the digestive system. Plays football regularly. Uh, it also can be useful. Use can, but less in the last couple of months. Does it make a difference for the gastroenterologist? No. Yes, because in the last time he... He do less activity, so maybe for this is... Uh... Less physical activity, but does this help me uh, diagnose the patient? No. I don't think so, so I'll leave it aside. Lives with his girlfriend, and they have a dog. Yes, yes the dog is important. Because he has... Yeah. The dog is important. Okay, yes. why, is the, why is the dog important here? I'm very curious. Maybe a factor of uh, yeah. transmitting new diseases, yeah. Or yeah. viruses. Or... I have a presumed Crohn's disease and arthritis. Uh, maybe it's not a, a Crohn disease. Maybe it's um, a virus. Yeah. Yes, but he, he also can get a virus from um, from a dog. <laughs> from a dog. Huh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Apparently. Well, given given the low probability uh, mm -hmm. of his um, weight loss, uh, which uh, has happened in the last month, mm -hmm. and given the fact that viruses do not usually last that long, I would leave the dog out of the question. But I would mention the gastroenterologist that he denies any recent travel or unsanitary living or working conditions because yes. they might be related uh, to a long-term digestive issue, right? Okay. What about admitting being a under a lot of pressure with a workload in college in the last year? Yes. Yes, it's very... It might be. Oh, I uh, 
I wrote it in red instead of hmm, how do yeah. I undo this? You know, that teacher is not the best, uh, has not the best technology skills. But I will write it in yellow. What do you think? Should we, uh, should we uh, talk about stress in red or in green? Yeah. Uh, um, in uh, yellow or in green? Yellow. Sorry. Ah, yellow. I agree. Okay. What about the medication, the vitamin D supplements? Yes. Why? Because this is probably over the counter, right? I don't, I don't know if he has a prescription or not. Mm -hmm. Can this influence Crohn's disease, um, any arthritis related to inflammatory diseases? No. Probably not. I'll leave it aside. Family history, you have hypertension and hyperthyroidism. <laughs> to be taken or not? Yes. Why? Why should we take that the family, the mother, the father, the grandfather, I don't know who in his family had hypertension and hyperthyroidism? Why is it relevant for the gastroenterologist? No, it is not relevant. Remember that the specialist that we send a patient to has a different, has a different, had a certain approach. He wants to know details which are related to the condition of the patient. So medical background, let's go to the medical background, which is of course the recent medical background. Presents with abdominal pain, diarrhea, recent weight loss for the past three months. Yeah. Yes, yes, in yes, one way or important. another, yes. Currently he has 10 episodes of diarrhea per day. Oh, sorry, I'm modifying it. 10 episodes of diarrhea per day with no blood. Yes. It's important. Yes. Totally important. Wakes up with abdominal pain and diarrhea about three times per night. Yes, it's important too. It is important as well. Does not report any urgency in complete empty or incontinence. Yes. Yes. Important. Weight has dropped visibly. I think this is a repeated piece of information that we are not taking because we have already taken it. Lost that weight. Yes. Lost. Experience abdominal pain uh, when so or with occasional diarrhea since he was in middle school. How old is the patient today? A uh, college student. A college student. So he's yeah. 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he has experienced abdominal flu, uh, abdominal flu, sorry, <laughs> abdominal pain with occasional diarrhea since he was in middle school. But he often passed it off. As the stomach flu, relevant or irrelevant? Irrelevant. It is we important. We should measure that we have in the past. It is relevant, yes, because if we uh, suspect Crohn's disease, this is this should be totally related. Back stiffness in the mornings and arthritis of the knees, elbows, and hands for the past two years. I think this uh, is not important because the doctor is a uh, gastroenterology. Okay, we go back to the diagnosis, to the provisional diagnosis, and I see arthritis related to inflammatory bowel disease. I think even if we send the patient to a gastroenterologist, the, the approach should be integrated. And I think this is also important if we... Um, if we uh, suspect autoimmune diseases. He seldom requires analgesia, usually symptoms disappear with movement. I would connect this with the previous one because probably it's about arthralgias, yeah? Okay, have we have, uh, do we have anything clear? Yes. Okay. We have an assessment, we have an examination which shows that and now you tell me what I should choose from here. Uh, he looks tired, pale, pale. Abdominal. So pale. You, are te you are telling me that we should take pale, but remember yes. if you don't have enough words, the paleness of the patient is not as relevant as the others are, yeah? I mean, if we, uh, if we pass the number of words, the necessary ones. The abdomen, which is soft, lax, mild, central yes. tenderness. Yes, is important. Yes, Okay, I agree. The perianal region seems normal. <laughs> mm. 
Oh, yes, I, I would take it. I would take it too. Uh, cardiovascular system, neurology, respiratory with normal examination. Ah, this, I, you know, this, this could be relevant, but if they are normal and they are not yeah. directly related to our area, I would put it in green. I don't think that I have enough words to, to add this one. Uh, heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate. Yes. Well, they are normal too. They are also normal. So um, I would prefer to go back and leave this empty without any line because probably I'm not going to take them, yeah? But the blood test with the hemoglobin, uh, white cell count and the others. Shall I write them down to the, shall I send them to the gastroenterologist or ignore them? Ignore them. Yes, so you would like to ignore them. Do you see anything that is abnormal there? Hemoglobin is no, lower. Like uh, is lower. Protein. Proteins, the C protein reaction is yeah. very high, the platelets and everything else. So here the blood tests are representative yeah. for inflammation. Yes. So we can uh, see inflammatory reaction here. The fecal pro calprotectin, uh, which would be relevant for us to see the inflammatory, it is an inflammatory marker. An inflammation marker, uh, it's awaited, and the stool culture and virology negative is also important to write. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, AST, ALT, urea, creatinine, uh, sodium, and everything else. Re yes. Should we write them or not? Yes, because it's really yes. no, because everything is normal. So, uh, with the amount of information that we have here, yeah. <laughs> Um, we can write down that the, the um, uh, blood count, mm, we can write down only what is abnormal. And in our case, we have enough. We have the blood tests, yeah? And everything that is not related directly to the digestive symptoms can be left aside. Awaiting private appointment for MRI small bowel. Should the gastroenterologist know? Yes, of yes. course. Yes. Oh, okay. Do you think we have enough information for 200 words? Yes. yes. I think more, so. More than more that. Than, it's more, more than, than we need. Oh, okay. So now, can you tell me, now we have the information. We selected the relevant information, which is the first most important step in writing the letter. And now I would like to know how you would organize this letter. The proposed. So, first of all, you know that you need to write the introduction where you mention yeah. the reason of writing the letter. And what is the reason of writing this letter? Yeah. Ask the, the presentation to do low and upper endoscopy. Okay, so we refer the patient for further investigation, assessment, and management of his condition because you also have the initiation of his treatment, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do we write in the introduction the provisional diagnosis? Yes. Definitely, because they need to make the difference. So the gastroenterologist is the one who will give us a definitive diagnosis instead of a temporary one. Okay. This is the introduction. And then what are we writing in the second paragraph? The medical presentation, the, I mean, the so-called admission state. So the presentation to the surgery with the symptoms. Symptoms. And then? Maybe the findings? The on examination investigation, and investigation and findings. Yes. So we have like this. The first of them, it's in the introduction, followed by? Admission by admission, I mean symptoms. admission, no, uh, presentation with symptoms, with investigation, and then the findings, yes? Both the ones that uh, are already clear and the ones that are still waited for, yeah? Okay, and then what should we also mention? So I have presentation, investigation, 
findings. We don't have any treatment because in case we had had treatment, we should have mentioned them. Yeah. And what else should we include? About uh, his, uh, um, that he uh, smokes cigarettes. About, and... Yes, so we will include his history. Okay, so his, his history that uh, can make him vulnerable in uh, front of this uh, con condition that he has. So we have smoking. We also need to state the fact that he hasn't traveled or lived under unsanitary conditions. Yeah. And I would also use here the occasion to discuss about the pattern of his pain that has been present in his life since he was a teenager. School. Yeah. School. Okay, so it is important to mention in the letter introduction with the purpose, of course, and the provisional diagnosis, uh, the symptoms with uh, investigation and findings, the medical and social background. Yes. And then, of course, we can uh, make a conclusion, summarizing it and telling what we expect, telling once more what we expect and giving maybe giving details. If in the introduction we said that we, uh, we refer the patient for specialized investigation, assessment, uh, management, in the conclusion, we can detail them and talk about lower and upper endoscopy. Endoscopy. And initiating the treatment. How was the letter? Did you enjoy it? Have you enjoyed yes. it? Because we haven't finished yet. I think, yes, it is, uh, it is very difficult to make a letter that would uh, be um, also good for nurses, doctors, and the other medical professionals. But we succeeded. And I'm very proud of you because you cooperated very well. And I think um, for, um, for our uh, public here who is represented by students, by our students, you can do it as a homework for the next time. What do you think? Uh, some of you agree, some of you say, oh my God, another tough letter for us. But remember that we'll go to, to sit an exam. We'll have an exam soon. So this is a very good task for you. Yeah, I'm going to send you by email. Uh, as for our um, audience, it was very nice to have you here with us today. I hope it was relevant. I hope the lesson was relevant and we are waiting to see you again for other free classes of our Andrea Berkout Academy. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.